Rob Kambach, I'm with product management uh, within Wonderware uh, by Snyder Electric. I wanted to talk to you today about um, the new release, um, recent release of Alarm Advisor. And Alarm Advisor is a package to analyze your uh, alarms. It can provide you um, very valuable insights of what are the disturbing factors in your uh, plant or your facility. And it basically comes with um, a couple of components. This is the uh, alarmadvisor.com uh, website where you can go and uh, try the product for yourself. Here is also uh, where I can log in. Um, this is in guest mode. If you would want to uh, have a login and all that, um, download the Alarm Advisor software from WDN. And at that point, you install it and you get a demo mode um, that will allow you to have 2,500 records. Uh, and you can connect that to InTouch or System Platform. Uh, so today, it connects to InTouch and System Platform. And it retrieves the alarms from the ALMDB or the WW uh, ALMDB. Um, the WW ALMDB is our legacy database um, that InTouch uses and system platform. Um, the database is, is uh, being um, um, the, the logger, the alarm logger feeds it data from the alarms from InTouch. Um, it has to be in detailed mode. Um, so a database that is in consolidated mode does not work with this system. So if you have a logger, you have to set your logger up for uh, detailed and not for consolidated. Um, and that has to do with the type of record sets. Um, then the second database that we support is A2ALMDB right now. So A2ALMDB is the uh, new database that came out with 2014 um, that um, that gets stored, uh, it's alarm stored, not through the logger, but through the engines directly and the, using using the historian. Um, so that is uh, 2014 and 2014 R2. The newest one, history blocks that we released in, in 2014 R2 are not supported yet by the tool, will be later. Um, so if I look at the um, um, typical things here is, um, this dashboard provides me with metrics. These metrics are basically uh, uh, settings um, in the system. So I have to log in to get to those settings. So let me log in. Um, it doesn't like me right now. Yeah. So basically, if we look at that, I'm going to pull up a Word document real quick. These are, this is the settings page. Um, if you look at the EMUA, um, there are um, 1,440 alarms speak per day, 144 alarms um, a day uh, in regular mode, one to ten, one or 10 alarms per 10 minutes. Uh, one alarm is average, 10 alarms is peak, um, which are recommended guide, guidelines according to the EMUA, and, but they can vary by process and by, by location. Um, so the first thing in Alarm Advisor would probably be to set up these uh, settings towards your uh, facility. So we have three sections here, which is general KPIs and systems. Systems is what we connect to. So right now we're connecting from one database, collecting from one database. Uh, we can collect up to uh, we can connect up to ten databases into the system, and there are three um, um, Alarm Advisor editions: standard, professional, and premier. Uh, so standard does one database, professional does five databases, and Premier does ten databases. Um, the clients, so the amount of connections to Alarm Advisor, so this is the client side where, that we are looking at now, uh, is unlimited. So uh, you, uh, as many people that want to access the information can access the information. So here's the um, alarm rate that we talked about that are uh, part of the EMUA. And uh, one per 10 minutes, six per eight per hour, 60 per hour peak, eight per hour average. So I can make changes to this if I want to. And that gets reflected into the dashboard metrics. So let's take a look at the dashboard metrics. So the dashboard metrics can give you at a glance uh, uh, an overview of 
how the performance of your uh, alarm subsystems are doing and if you're trending towards target or away from target. Um, these dashboards can be edited and you can add widgets to it if you want. Um, these widgets basically are alarm rate and, and severity distribution. So if I want to look at the alarm rate, things that I would have to my availability here is uh, I can go in and I can do a time based um, so I can look per 10 minutes per, 10, per hour per 8 hours 12 24 hours I can apply filters uh, filters could be a tank farm uh, in this case or a reactor or all the reactors the filters can be built dynamically so you can build your own filters uh, the things you want to see in your plant and the things you want to focus on so that can be a specific area can be a specific node can be um, anything. It can be only acknowledged alarms, uh, stuff like that, only unacknowledged alarms. Um, so the total rate, rate by severity, uh, display choices, um, and then the comparison. So you can do current, current month, year, half, quarter, day, week, depending on how much data you have in your system, or last, um, and last, I can do last month, last week, last quarter like that and then you can compare it, compare it to the previous uh, which is it shows you the date here if I do month it's 31 to 331 which it was March and it's going to compare it to February all right so if I say current month it's going to take April and it's going to compare it to March um, very easy very easy to set up so these you can set up by yourself and um, so the, the uh, the alarm rate has uh, two views. You can switch. It can show you a total number or a severity distribution. So these can switch in mode uh, of what they are showing. And then this pie chart is the severity distribution. So it shows you how many how many you have in each category. Also, that metric um, can be defined. Uh, so according to the uh, standards, it's, uh, we put the standards numbers in here. So um, right now I'm 47 percent here 15 11 21 so the top ones I, I have too many alarms in uh, critical high and medium uh, and that would be my goal to get those numbers reduced um, and be more in compliance out of a severity distribution perspective um, so if we go to the second part which is now um, looking at the analysis the, um, um, uh, that was the dashboard. So if we look at analysis really is, um, um, and let me pull up the Word document again. A typical use of these reports is to see when alarm rates peak and how uh, severity distribution changes over time. So in a glance, this shows you um, if I go to current week uh, and we get a better view. This is a, a demo system that I start up this week. so. It doesn't have too much data in it right now. Um, it's it's gonna have it, but it has to run for a time for a little while. Um, so here I can see the uh, total mark alarm counts, which are 724, and of those were uh, 230 uh, low, 86 medium, 194 high, and 214 critical. In a real plant, this would be bad because that would probably mean that my plant shuts down every five minutes. Um, but, and here's a list, so you can always switch to a list view. Uh, these widgets tell you uh, KPI of that total uh, rubber band selection. So if if I would make it smaller, like right now I have 15,000 alarms that I'm looking at. But if I took, go to the current day, it would basically zoom in and say, oh, you're looking at 4,500 or 15,000 alarms, right? So. Um, and you can then, um, and this time scale changes, it's now hourly. So it went from a, um, a certain view to hourly. Now, let's say I would want to see real quick here things that I can do here. I can build filters. So I can say, um, was, what, where are the alarms acknowledged, right? So um, basically, it's acknowledged. Now this is a demo system, so it's very badly attended. There's no operator here. Uh, it's uh, uh, so these two times the system was acknowledged, and it was uh, 76 
uh, alarms uh, were acknowledged. Uh, I can also see um, in here, if I take that away, I can say uh, from a certain area, and all the areas are in here, so I can choose a certain reactor, probably two reactors, and then I can say, uh, was that acknowledged? And I can go in here, is acknowledged, apply, and then it will show me only by those two areas. So um, those were seven alarms. And if I go to list view now, I'm starting to drill down um, in what they, what, what they were. So brings me to the next alarm, goes to frequent. Uh, so the next report, frequent report, is things that happen often. So it shows the seven alarms here, and it shows on what days they occurred. So I can I can I can pick them, and they show me here in the bottom what days did they occur, and then I can switch to a list view, and it shows me um, uh, the seven alarms. So four reactor level in R34, reactor temp, and reactor temp uh, total duration and then uh, minimum maximum duration and if they were acknowledged so in this case because we have the filter on we only see acknowledged alarms um, i can also say well from all this bring me back to all of my alarms the frequent reports are used uh, for um, let me show you and bring back that word document for you for a minute so the frequent alarms are those alarms that occur very often. And the frequent alarm report shows the bad actors. Eliminating the top 10 or 20 of these can often reduce the alarm load significant. When confronted with frequent alarm situations, it's, it's valuable to examine if the alarm limits are set properly in this case. So this report will also tell how many times an operator acknowledged the particular bad actor, what gives an indication of responsiveness. And not only that, uh, lower act rates could also indicate that operators have too many alarms um, and basically um, uh, are unable to keep up with. So those key metrics are presented in these widgets. So these budget widgets actually say, okay, for the current week, you have um, 1,900 alarms, 285 alarms a day. Um, and then um, the selected alarm statistics here are one day and 70 hours and 1% were fleeting and 0% of the alarms were acknowledged. So basically none of the alarms uh, were acknowledged in this case. Okay. If we go back and take the filter off, we should get more alarms. So now we get the top 25. You, you can select how many alarms you want to see, uh, 25, 50, 40, 30, 10. Uh, by default it's 10, but you can, uh, you can increase the count and see more uh, top, top end number alarms. Um, so that's the frequent report, and that will tell you a little bit about how many times alarms occurred and which, which are the bad actors um, within your facility. Um, standing alarms are different. So if we take a look at standing, and standing alarms are really um, uh, are those alarms that are active for very long durations. Uh, these often indicate conditions caused by faulty alarm limits by systems that might be offline. So things that you could use here are plant state suppression. Um, you could use um, um, shelving. Uh, you could use um, um, tools to tell the system that these systems are offline and so they don't have all these standing alarms all the time. Um, it might be also decommissioned, but the alarms were never switched off. Uh, a thorough review of the cause will often resolve a lot of them. Uh, standing alarms often have a high act rate since they are always present. So with frequent, they come very often. But standing, they don't come often. They're just always there. These are whatever control your room you go, you always see this long list of acknowledged alarms. And typically, those are the standing alarms that, um, that basically are always uh, on, no matter what the condition of the plant is at that point. Uh, so we talked a little bit about how we can reduce these. There are two reports here um, by most frequent, uh, so things that happen more often, or standing alarms that uh, basically are indicated by longest standing alarms, right? So um, this one was on for three days and four hours, right? And the color indicates what severity it is. So here's a critical alarm uh, that was on for uh, three days and one hour. 
All right, so this is that report. And that's based on frequency standing by most frequent and the longest, and then the total of uh, standing alarms, uh, which will give you the total counts, uh, which is the one in the bottom. Uh, and you can see by time, um, at what time of the day, week, month, year, you had the largest amount of standing alarms. So that's what this report does. Um, the next one is um, uh, fleeting. And fleeting is a definition, basically a uh, system uh, setting that you can do. And in this system, um, it's, uh, it's um, an alarm that has been on for less uh, than 30 seconds. So let me take a quick look at show you fleeting um, in the document. So fleeting here is um, typical alarms that appear and disappear frequently and are very often short of duration, too short for the operator to act upon. So a lot of these alarms won't be act. So typical act rates low in the low percentiles um, are, are uh, probably appropriate because the operator never had a chance to act them. They were gone before he could act them. Um, criteria can be set around alarm duration, chatter time. So things, things um, there are also sometimes called chattering alarms. Things to do to uh, get rid of these is more um, put bounce and debounce timers into the system. Um, a certain amount of time, like here, I'm looking for, I think fleeting is defined as 30 seconds in the, in the system. I can put it to 15 seconds or 10 seconds and then Basically, anything that comes and goes within 10 seconds is identified as a uh, fleeting alarm. So these reports you can then use um, to put those bounce and debounce timers in um, and basically get them eliminated that way. Um, so there's a total one again and then uh, the most frequent um, uh, alarms, which in this case is uh, reactor temp. I could switch to list view again and that one uh, has a count of 70. Total duration was 25 minutes, average duration was 21 seconds, minimum 4, maximum 26. Uh, one time here it was acknowledged, so uh, as you can see, that's the fleeting report. Then the last one that we have is consequential. Consequential is um, basically determining that within your system, if something happens uh, often, um, um, related with that might be other alarms that happen too. So for example, um, um, when this happened, this is a very low proper, profitability. So this is by confidence. So if we look by occurrence, by confidence is more like a, um, I can say, reactor temp. Um, 98 times and 15 times this one occurred, 13 times. So most likely these don't have a relationship. But there might be some that have a relationship between each other where you can say, hmm, um, when this, if this goes off 50 times and this goes off 39 times at the same time, are they related? Do they have something to do with each other? Can be, um, because remember, we can analyze multiple databases. So you might have two or three databases in this system and that are shown on different terminal stations, right? So for an operator or for somebody that operates the facility, they are, um, um, one might be the steam utilities, boiler utilities, production facility, packaging, and they all might be impacted by one event that ripples through the system. So with this, you can identify these type of events if they influence things that are down the line. Um, and that can be based on confidence or occurrence. Um, and those are the things that you would use uh, consequential uh, analysis for. So this was a short introduction uh, for Alarm Advisor. Um, we will be um, uh, posting more videos. Uh, there will be four instructional type of videos that we'll post later. Uh, this is more the introduction video and we'll come back with all the other detailed information and talk about it. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll um, um, see you again next time. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.